What's up, everybody? My name is Darian, also known as Darian Plans, and welcome to Planning Together, where every week, y'all, I have a friend come on and share with us how they are organizing their life and their heart. So if you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, y'all, so you do not miss out on future guests and future videos, y'all. I'm so excited. My friend Michelle is joining us tonight. She is a former public school teacher. She has three beautiful children and three dogs, and she has been married for 19 years, y'all. I am so excited to share her with y'all tonight. As always, go ahead and light up those comments and hit that like button so we can let Michelle uh, know how much we are so excited to have her joining us tonight. Hello, Michelle. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. This is so much fun. I'm and so I'm excited. Sure, hopefully, I'm going to have a quiet house for an hour. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> you never know with three kids and three dogs in the house how it's going to go. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It, this means so much. I am so happy to do it. I've had so much fun watching all the other ones. I feel honored to be included in your like illustrious lineup. Well, you know, so here's the secret, y'all. Um, Michelle was one of the first people I told about planning together, and I was super nervous about it. And I was like, it seems so weird. And why would I do something like this? And she was like, no, you got to do it. Like, do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scared and afraid. And I was like, you're my kind of people. I need That's to right. keep I mean, I just, I saw it. You're like a rising star. I knew people needed to hear your way of looking at things and the way you talk to friends is so encouraging. I just knew you needed to spread that around. Share Aww. that. Oh, you're so kind. Okay. Well, can you start us off and y'all know what to do? Y'all know how y'all know how this works. Let us know how you are doing. Michelle, you start us off letting us know how you are doing. And y'all let us know in the comments how you are doing and where you're tuning in from. I love hearing where y'all come, like where you're watching from. Well, I'm here from Owensboro, Kentucky, which is kind of a small town. We're a few hours away from Louisville. We are two hours due north of Nashville. So if you know where those two cities are, you can kind of triangulate and figure out where we're at. I'm uh, from all over the place, but Kentucky's been home for about eight years and I'm doing really good. It's been a good week. We are gearing up for school here. Um, the kids in our county go back next Wednesday. And so um, I've got a rising sixth grader, rising 10th grader, and then our third grader is going to be homeschooling this year. And she's super excited about it, which is awesome. Um, just she went to a smaller private school. And so we decided homeschooling would be a better choice for her this year. My big kids will be doing public school, but it's going to be all online. So oh. we're doing all that Chromebooks and calculators and you know, all that fun stuff. Okay. So when did they, uh, did they start school this week? Or well, is it next, week? Start next Wednesday. So like we're, we just got the schedule for my middle school or we're still waiting on schedules from the high school. Lord be with every guidance counselor who is trying to like scramble and take care of all these kids and all these changes. I, I just, my heart goes out to them because I don't think I could be that part of the job. Listen, all of my teachers and school administrators mm -hmm. and school districts, like, Thank you so much right. for what you're doing. Right. Like, oh my thank gosh. You. Thank you. Cause I can only imagine like my mm -hmm. brother's a teacher, so he's been like dealing with it as well. And they just started having students come back last week and it's just different and it's new and you're having to adjust and all the things. So and I feel like for, for teachers, no matter what their counties are doing, some people are happy and some people aren't. And oh, just God bless the teachers, seriously. And the administrators and the support staff and the bus drivers, like they are all, they have pivoted and accommodated so well. It's just, whew. Oh, yes. I'm kind of glad that this year my classroom is one and not 25. <laughs> I, I did my years in public school and it was wonderful and I loved it and I loved my students, but this year's gonna be a little easier in my little alcove nook in the upstairs with just my third grader. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. And I can't wait to talk about that because I have, so many questions as okay. well. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> but you, let's just dive right in. I'm so excited because okay. I know tonight we're literally going to get really geeky about the planners <laughs> and our yeah. tools and the stickers and all the things. So what was your first planner? And y'all comment. I didn't, I don't know if I asked you guys this, but in the comments, let us know what your favorite, your first planner was as well. But what was your first planner, Michelle? I, well, I used a lot of sort of non-official planner things to plan for a very long time. My first official planner in the planner community was an Erin Condren life planner. Okay. I was either in 2014 or 2015. 
And that was what dove me into the fact that there was even a planner community online. Like I didn't know before that. And then it was just whoosh, you know, down the rabbit hole. <laughs> there's Facebook groups and there's Instagram and there's, I mean, and there's sticker shops. Ooh, you know, that's a rabbit hole for sure. <laughs> that's a rabbit hole. Okay. So that was your first. Okay. So yes. what is your planner stack looking like now? Okay. So I've got my Moxie Life which is like my, my whole brain and my whole heart is in here. Mm -hmm. And I've got a passion planner daily, which I don't use every single day, but I use that. It's, it's kind of my breakout for days that are super busy, either with a lot of things scheduled and I need those hourlies, or I just need to do a good brain dump. It's got that dot grid and I just, you know, you can just, Right? <laughs> Wait, can we just praise Jesus for dot grid for a second? Because dot grid is everything i'm such um, a dot grid person like you can do anything with it you can set it up as trackers you can use it as a list it's like the boxes are already ready for you if you want to do a check box i can doodle on it and i don't feel like i'm ruining the flow of you know it's just it's so accommodating it's so welcoming everybody needs a little dot grid in their life that's what everybody needs a little bit of dot grid in their life yeah. i don't know why i got so excited about it but like i don't i don't it's just it's so flexible. And I think I'm mm -hmm. just whatever, like my, I like flexibility in my system. So like not great is one of those things that's just super flexible. And like, mm -hmm. I know some people are true to their lines and some people like, I never get this right. It's grid paper. I think it's just called grid paper, but it's not dots. It's just lines that are in grid. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Like graph paper, like old school yeah. from high school, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. That's what it's called. Graph paper. And, yeah. But I just love a good dot grid. Such a dot um, grid. Um, yeah, I like it. I mean, I don't I like don't it. I don't like passion. Day, hmm? So that's a part of the passion planner? Okay, so it's in the passion daily. Okay. So it's mine is the undated. So I can't speak to what the other ones look like because I'm not an expert. But so there's an hourly. Hold on. I'm not good with the back and forth. <laughs> an hourly thing here. There's prompts. No, see, I'm backwards. There's prompts over here. So you can do your top three and what you're doing for work. But then this whole page is dot grid. And it says space for inf like infinite possibilities. Right? It's, <laughs> I mean, when your no spend is over, or if you ask Katie for special permission, <laughs> you'll have to pick one up soon. Shh, Katie, I didn't tell her to buy one. Listen, um, <laughs> that no spin went <laughs> out the window. <laughs> so, you gave it a good college try. I mean, you I, had a, I gave yeah. it a good five days. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's five days that you didn't spend. Give yourself credit for what you accomplished there. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Thank you. Oh, yes. yeah. I, I think it was the, the day that um, Katie come. I was like, yeah, we, just, we went from no spin to like a spin list. Right. Oh, that's right. I remember that. I remember that. It was in a comment or something on, wasn't that from a comment? Somebody was like, I don't do spend, no spends. I do spend less. Yes. And it opened up a whole new world of possibility for you. A that's whole new po world of possibilities that didn't save my bank account, but it, <laughs> it helped just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, and now I want to know is how has your planning style changed throughout the years from when you first started using your planner to mm -hmm. like how you use it now. How have you seen yourself changing with your system? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start in the middle and catch you up to now and then I'm gonna go way back. Okay, so when I started planning in 2015, 14, wherever that was, and I fell down the planner hole, I was like, I need everything. And so I bought a lot of stickers and I bought a lot of washi and I bought a lot of different pens. And I had a, just, when I look back at it now, it kind of makes my eyeballs spin in crazy circles mm -hmm. like in because I'm like, whoa, that was a lot. That was a lot going on. And so over the years, I've just done a little bit less. And so if you've seen my Instagram post, you know that some weeks I do stickers and I still like pretty and I'll decorate and I'll doodle in the corners. But for the most part, I'm pretty functional. I really like a good pen and highlighter week. That's very... Um, the busier I am, the less decoration I do in my planner. Okay. Cause I've got, if I've got a lot to do, I just, I got to sort of streamline it and keep it smooth and easy. But so I would say that's been the trend. Like it started out with lots of stickers and washi. And like, you know, that first planner was like so chunky by the time I got done. Cause every page <laughs> up on it, it wouldn't close. Um, 
And so now I've, I've kind of streamlined over the years, but going way back when I first started planning, like in my adult life, because of course I was a planner as a kid, like I would take notebooks and, and I planned ridiculous things. Like I had, this is way back in the eighties. There was this toy called Quince. If anybody in the comments is old, do you remember these? They were these little plastic dolls. It was a set of five, like they were quintuplets. And I kept detailed logs of these baby dolls lives, like all five of them. Like I had written backstories, like they had personalities. One of them was scared of the dark and the other four weren't like, <laughs> I kept these <laughs> eating schedule and when they were going to need their next diaper and bottle. <sighs> Ridiculous. I've been writing fiction for a long time is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So you so I did that kind of stuff as a, as a little kid. And then we got planners in school for agendas and keeping up with homework. And then I was a teacher. And so I had teacher planners. And so I didn't really do much planning at home, but I did teacher planners all through my years in public school. Then I'm finally like, I'm a stay at home mom and I've got a household to manage. And so I just planned in line notebooks, composition books and like journals and things like that. So I went looking because I save everything. And I found, this is my planner from 2010. This is from 10 years ago. I only had two babies and I lived in a very small house, but like I've got all, these are just, it's just my to-do list. I had a daily to-do list and I would check things off and then I'd move it over to the next day and do the daily to-do list. And I had, I made tabs at the top with sections, to-do lists and random things I was trying to keep track of. And then this one, I had a lot of fun looking at this house dreaming. Okay. 2010 was my husband's last year in residency. He was going to finish his program and become a general surgeon. And I knew we'd be buying like a real house. And I made this list of like all these things that I would like to have in a house someday. So I went, I haven't looked at this thing in 10 years. I can't tell you how many of these things on this list are in this house I live in today. It's the sweetest thing. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. Neatest thing. Like one of the things that I put in here, I put a little tab on it when I found it. Let me find it. Um, how did I write it? I wanted a multi-purpose mud room off of the kitchen with a series of benches, shelves, or hook panels for each of us to store shoes, bags, and coats. Do you this is the laundry room slash mom's office. That <laughs> door leads to our entry in our garage and my kitchen. I love, like, literally, that was so specific, and you wrote right? it down. I wrote it down in 2010. I think that's probably my favorite part about planning is looking back on the plans and looking back on, like, the stuff we write, the goals and the dreams, and being able to see that, and then, like, wait, look, I'm actually, like. like I'm living the dream. I'm literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just a thought. And now it's like my reality. Oh, and that's such a neat perspective. We've been having a lot of conversations about contentment. And so that was a really cool perspective check moment for me. Like looking back at something you wrote down 10 years ago, it's literally, I mean, it's that people put it on posters, but like literally, I remember when I prayed for the things I have right now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's a nice reminder to, um, to be thankful, to be grateful, to be content. Like, anyway, so we gonna take now. Now I'm like, my brain is going. Okay, different directions. Okay, my brain is going so many different directions because you said content, gratitude, and I'm like, well, let's talk about it. Okay, yeah. Um, what's up, you guys? You guys are so awesome. The they're saying that's amazing. Uh, Jewel, okay, you're not alone, Michelle. Julie says she remembers <laughs> the twin couplets. <laughs> It was, it was the whole, it, and they were miniature. It was fun. It was a good thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, the 80s, early nineties. Confessions of a girl boss said you were manifesting before it became. <laughs> That's, That's true. true. Ahead of the curve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Seeing everything you accomplish is one of the best parts about planning. Okay. So speaking of that, I have a question. If you go back and you look at the goals you wrote at the beginning of this year, Hmm. What progress have you made or what have you seen or noticed? I know you weren't expecting that one. That was yeah, a no, no. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. So in my personal goals, 
I didn't really know what I was going to do with those. And so the things that I have, like if I were going to redo them, I would probably put them in different categories now. But most of those I've made traction on. How so? How so? How so? I'm like, rewind. Wait, wait. Okay. What? Okay. So one of the ones that I put under personal was to maintain like a daily practice of quiet time in the morning. Mm -hmm. And if I were to rewrite that, I would probably like if I were sitting down to do these annual goals, I would stick that under like the spirituality, personal growth one. Mm hmm. But I kind of didn't know what to do with it when I was first writing these out. And then um, the other thing that I put in my personal section was about learning practices to silence my inner critic. And I still think that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I still think that's a good one, but I would have put that one in personal growth too. Okay, rewind. Say that again. Learning practices to silence the inner critic. Okay, what practices have you learned? Okay, so this is a whole, you know, we've chatted a little bit of Enneagram stuff. I can go. I'm not going to go deep because that's too much. But in some of the Enneagram stuff that I've learned, one of the things that has come up over and over is the idea of both silence and solitude and stillness. Like those three practices really kind of support lots of different things for different numbers on the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. I'm a one. I tend toward perfectionism. I tend toward having this strong inner critic voice that my gut reaction on finishing anything is to pick it apart and see what I did wrong that I could do better the next time. Mm -hmm. So learning how to not listen to that voice and instead celebrate what I have done. Gratitude, like it kind of goes back to what I was just saying, that gratitude and contentment, like I'm learning more and more that if I can sit and be still, I can tap into gratitude and contentment instead of criticizing myself striving to do more, grasping to do more, that kind of stuff. It, it balances out in a really deep way. Oh my God. Okay. I have so many thoughts and so many questions. Y'all, if y'all have questions, go ahead and just put them in here. Um, <laughs> we plan on talking about all that stuff. <laughs> okay. Cause I know that you, you, you're really familiar with Enneagram more than most. You're like beyond the what people see on Instagram and beyond the test, like you have read, researched it. Yeah. Um, and so my question for you is, oh, I have so many questions now. Um, <laughs> the first one is what, so you say you sit in silence, like, do you just, is there something that you're thinking through? Are you thinking about the things you're grateful for? Are there questions that you ask yourself? Like <laughs> someone who's getting started with sitting in silence, like someone mm -hmm. like me, I don't do well with silence. I know I need some silence mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I knew that it was the practice that I needed to work on the most because it's the hardest for me. Silence is really, it's very hard for me to have actual silence. Like in my head, I've always got thoughts and music and like lyrics from the, like it's really, really hard. And so I don't, like I'm not a master at it. I can probably only manage it for really short periods of time. But part of it for me is really connected to my body, keeping my body still, like, it's really hard for me not to be spinning this chair. Like right now I want to move my feet and I move my hands when I talk. And so keeping my body still is helping me learn how to get my mind silent. And I'm just at the, like, I feel like I'm just beginning to figure those things out. But for me, it goes with an attitude of prayer. And I think that's what helps move it toward gratitude and contentment. And though like, that's the attitude I want to have when I like, that's the point of using that practice. It's not just silence for the sake of silence, but it's to move me away from criticism and into acceptance and gratitude and those kind of things. That's good. That's real good. Yeah, that's good. Challenge. Um, Challenge. It's a work in progress. A work in progress, but that's okay. Like, and first off, you are not, listen, I think you got Julie, who's a one. I think, uh, who else sit there one up in here? Katie said she's a one. Jennifer mm -hmm. said she's a two. Yeah. Um, I think I seen someone else say that they were a one also on the Enneagram. I know I'm a seven on the Enneagram. Um, lyrics to Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything reminds me of lyrics to Hamilton. <laughs> literally, literally. Like that's what's going through the brain all day. All, 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 all day. day. <laughs> Y'all, if you know your Enneagram number, comment and let us know. I'm very curious. I love meeting different people and your different Enneagram numbers. So one thing that you talked about, because you're a one and I see there's also a lot of ones is perfectionism and someone who's not even a one. But one thing I see in the planner community is people who get caught up in like, I have to make my planner look a certain way mm -hmm. or I'm afraid to write in it because I don't have the perfect mm -hmm. writing mm -hmm. or um, 
I'm a like get caught up in like I'm afraid to use the thing because it's not mm-hmm. perfect. So mm-hmm. has that been you before? Not too much with my planners, although okay. I would say that when I first discovered that there was like a planner world online, I was just a lurker like on some Facebook groups and on Instagram, like I followed a whole bunch of people, but I didn't post pictures of my own planner for a long time because of that. Like mine's not that pretty. Mine's not that coordinated. I don't do whatever. Um, And just, so I finally decided that I would start participating because the community is a lot of fun and the people are what, I mean, look at the, look at the comments. The people are fun. And I decided that I would rather, I would rather post something that turned out messy than miss out on the fun and the connection. You know what I mean? That was going to be more important. Say that again, because I feel like we need to hear that again, just in life. I decided I would rather post something messy than miss out on the fun and the connection. Like, because I think a lot of times if for people that wrestle with perfectionism, there's a lot of times that we won't even start something if we're afraid we're not going to finish with an A+. We won't even start the project if it's not going to get 101. We're not going to join the group if we're not going to be the best one in it. You know what I mean? And I think we've got to learn to just like, it's okay to do something mess. I started running about five years ago and I'm the worst runner. Like I've had more injuries. I've been in my physical therapist's office so many times. Like I'm slow. I'm not great at it. But running unlocked something in my brain where I realized I really just enjoyed it, even if I sucked at it, even if I was the worst one out there and the slowest one out there. And it was a very empowering thing in a lot of other aspects of life, too. I realized how many times I had let, oh, but I won't be good at it, hold me back and then I'd missed out. Did that hit a little bit? <laughs> I'm just feeling all the conviction and I'm just like, I don't even know what to say. Like, <laughs> cause it's so true. It's so true. Mm-hmm. And then we get on Instagram and we're on social media and we see people doing things that they're like, well, they're excelling in this. They, they're great at this. And why should I even do this? Because I'm not, like you said, I'm not going to end up with 101%. Like that's so good. I'm, I'm just processing because I'm like that. I think I needed to hear that. <laughs> well, then the whole conversation is worth it. That's all. That's that's it. That's the takeaway. We're, we're that's the takeaway. <laughs> I love that. I don't know. Has anyone ever told you? But your voice is really calming, like and soothing. Sometimes people say that on my like when I do my little plan with me's. I've gotten a few people tell me you should do a podcast. Your voice is very calming. I it's don't know. So if it's probably not calming when I'm fussing at them for like not doing a chore, but. <laughs> I love it so much. I love that so much. Okay. So I know you have this, like, I call it a superpower. (laughs) I'm not quite sure what you're going to say now, so I'm a little nervous. Okay. Well, you have multiple superpowers, in my opinion. But one of those superpowers is, I'm going to say it wrong. Is it speed reading? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a speed reader. (laughs) Okay. And didn't you win, like, some contest? Um, no. Well, okay. My mom, so I was homeschooled as a kid. And so I had time to explore weird talents and things like that. And I was, I started reading really young and I read voraciously. And so when I was in like third or fourth grade, she found this computer program. This was back in the days of like Commodore 64. Like it was like the big job. Jo- a Commodore 64. Julie will know what I'm talking about. I bet Julie, if she remembers Quinn, she'll remember. This was what computers looked like. Back in the day, they were big and clunky and they had these giant cartridges that you plugged into the side. Anyway, it was a speed reading computer program and it would display a few lines of text at a time and it supposedly would speed you up and make you faster. So I maxed out the program at a thousand words a minute as a fourth grader. (laughs) Like you read a thousand words in a minute? Yes, I could read a thousand words a minute and retain. I think I tested out at like 95% comprehension add a thousand words a minute. And then that was it. Like the, com- the computer program was basically like, that's all we got kid like that. <laughs> Cause it kept giving me new levels until I got to that point. I don't read that fast anymore. I am like in college. And when I'm reading to learn, I have to slow way down so that I can retain. Um, and just, you know, mom life. It's a real, that mom brain is a real thing. I know I can feel that I'm not that fast, but I do still read pretty quick. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, well, people are commenting on your Commodore because mom, we had my mom just told me we had one of those. We did. Uh <laughs> You're just too young to remember, bless it. I don't remember that. <laughs> Some people set before your time period. Y'all yep. are so funny. <sighs> okay, so. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> All right. So I want to know, have you always been a planner in the goal setter? Was this something that you, well, I mean, when you talked about your dolls. Goal setting. Yeah. I've definitely always been a planner. I've always had a thing for keeping lists. Um, I got that list or my love language shirt. Remember when the, when the sisters, our sisters, our sisters shirt came out, I also bought list or my love language because mm -hmm. mm, so true. I added that to my cart too, by the way. <laughs> You're spending less, right? Just less. Um, I have not always been a great goal setter. Like, and I think a lot of that was tied to the whole perfectionist thing. Like I just, it was scary for me to set a goal if there was the possibility that I wasn't going to achieve it and not get way out of the park. Hmm. And I tried a couple of other goal planning systems in the past that didn't feel like a good fit for me in this season of like, I'm a stay at home mom. I do a lot of volunteer gigs. I blog and I freelance write for a marriage ministry and I'm working on writing a novel but I felt like a lot of the other stuff that I was like, a lot of the other planning things were very entrepreneurial focused or very business focused. And I was like, but I don't have that kind of a gig or a side hustle or a, or a business I'm building or a brand. And so they kind of, I would start them and then I would, they would peter out. So when I met the Moxie life, like, I feel like such a convert. Like I'm, <laughs> I, have to, I want to like tell everybody about this wonderful thing. When I started using the Moxie life system, it, kind of blew my mind because it allowed me to set goals. It allowed me to see that I was already working toward goals in all these areas of my life. I just didn't realize it. I hadn't, I hadn't articulated them well. And so looking at each area and then articulating something was really helpful. And then I love the fact that we come back to it every week and every month and every quarter. And there's sort of this open, like the little blurbs at the bottom of the page there's this open invitation to recalibrate. If something's not working, don't do that one anymore. Shift, write a new goal, you know, create, you know, chart a new course. It's your life. So make it work. I just, I just love it. It just, it just kind of sparked all the, all the heart bubbles for me, you know? Yeah. I love that so much. Are you talking about like the, the wellness tip each? Yes. At the, end of each, at the bottom of the reflection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love those. I have to admit, I don't take advantage of those. I need to actually read them each week. They're a little bit tiny, and I think they might be, maybe they're going to get bigger next year. I feel like that was one of the sneaks we were told, was that maybe some things were going to get a little bigger. Yes. That'll help old eyeballs. Like even I know, though, that's, that's <laughs> one area that I feel like I should always, like, I need, because it's, like, literally great tips. And, like, I'm like, oh, that's great advice. Mm -hmm. But half the time, what happens with me in the Moxie Life is I'll have this revelation, and when I actually go back and read through the system, it's already there. And I'm like, this is what I get for not reading through something <laughs> and just dying. Are you right. the kind of person who builds an Ikea shelf on your own and then reads the directions later and you go, oh, that would have gone faster. <laughs> <laughs> that's your seven, that's your sevenness, darling. You're just yeah. like, I'm gonna experience this. I'm, so it out. I'm like, well, see, I look at the pictures. Reading all the words is just too much. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, A to B, awesome. Like, See, I, just, just, if I read them really fast. Maybe that's why it doesn't bother me. It takes me a few seconds. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, that's probably my problem. I, I, I don't necessarily read the directions beforehand and follow the rule. I'm just like, let me, okay, I'm just going to try it. And we're going to see what goes. Did you see Katie's comment the week that you guys were talking about routines and like the whole planner world started talking about routines. That was the Moxie life tip that week. You I know, know. that's I know. crazy. That's so crazy because you know, when I remember at the beginning of the year, when the, when it first came out, she was saying how she strategically placed yes. each tip throughout the year. So, you know, like during this season, during these months, these are when people are thinking through these things. And but wasn't there another one that was sort of oddly prescient? Like there was one, I feel like it was, there was one from March or April, like at the beginning of all the shutdowns when I was like, she did not even know at the time. I know. I'll look back and find it at some point. Didn't even know. That's so crazy. <laughs> that's, that's so, okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one who didn't read directions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
there there are two kinds of people in this world. <laughs> <laughs> the direction readers and the experience it now figure out, you know, read the fine print later. We'll deal with it later, right? <laughs> It'll all work out in the end. It's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. You literally just, you're always saying things. I'm like, wait, what, 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 what? And I know this, but stay at home mom. Yes. You were a former public school teacher. Yes. You're in the process of writing a novel. Yes. You're also a wife. How, okay. How do we, okay. What made you leave the school to go home mm -hmm. that's the first part and then okay. what got you started into writing like okay so I, I had been teaching in the public schools for five years five and a half years and my last year in the public schools I got my national board certification and part of the reason that I worked on getting that is because it's a 10-year certification and so my husband was getting ready to graduate medical school. And then I got pregnant and I was like, this is going to be a transition. Like the next couple of years are going to be a transition. We had to move after medical school for his internship. And then we moved again one year later for his residency. Okay. And so going from, we were in Florida for medical school, Tennessee for internship, Kentucky for residency. And the thing about teaching is that not all states honor each other's um, certifications. So I'd done all the work and gotten certified. Like I would, I'd been sort of certified in Georgia. Then I got certified in Florida and I just was like, Oh my gosh, the paperwork will kill me. Plus I knew I wanted to take at least one year off with the new baby. Yeah. So I thought, well, if I get my national boards, then that'll be recognized everywhere. See efficient. Like I was like, I, let me see if I can plan ahead and get some things done. So I earned my national boards knowing that it would be valid for 10 years. So wherever we ended up moving next, because I didn't know yet where his residency or attending years would be. Then after I get through this like newborn stage, if I decide to go back to the classroom, my certification will be valid. It'll reduce mm -hmm. the amount of work I have to do. But then um, we were kind of residents make about as much as teachers do. Like it's not a great, but we were making it. And so I was like, mm, if I have the choice, I think I'll stay home with the baby one more year. And then the next baby came along. And so then at that point we would have been paying more for daycare than I would have been bringing home. And it was like, uh, we'll just, we'll just continue on this track. So um, coming home was kind of a combination of moving and babies and knowing that my certification would, would kind of follow me at least for a few years. I've now stayed home longer than that certification lasts. And so if I wanted to go back, I'd have a whole lot of paperwork to do anyway. Um, and as far as writing, I started like blogging in 06, like as a mommy blogger, just, I was, I was at home with a baby and I'd been used to talking to a classroom of kids and colleagues like all day long. And now I just had like a baby. And so I had a whole lot of extra words, which is why my blog is called words to spare. Cause I have a lot of words. And if I, Saved them all up and let them all out on my husband. The man would like his head would explode like in the Indiana Jones movie or melt away, you know. So um, so I started blogging. And then as far as fiction. Uh, in 2015, I was getting ready to turn 35. And I just I had lost my mom a couple years before, which kind of does something for you. Like you just start thinking like. What if I only had. 19 more years. What would I want to do with this life? Mm -hmm. And I, for years and years and years, I had said that I wanted to write a book. I mean, in high school, in college, I major, I went back and forth between majoring in English and doing early childhood education. I ended up going with the little ones, but I've always loved literature, always thought that I would write. And so finally I was like, I just need to do it. And there's this thing that happens once a year called NaNoWriMo, which is short for National Novel Writing Month. So okay. every year in the month of November, there's this huge internet challenge. And the idea is that you'll write 50,000 words in the 30 days of November. So you can get online and take the pledge and then you upload the text. Like at the end of the month, you upload the text and it word counts it for you. And if you finish 50,000 words, you win and you get a certificate. Like anybody can, it's not one winner. Everybody can win. And you know what I told you about my personality type. And so when I discovered that, I was like, I'm going to do that and I'm going to win. And so I did. <laughs> so I sat down that November and I wrote 50,000 words. And I was like, this is great, but it's not done. Like 50,000 mm -hmm. is a really short novel. That's like The Great Gatsby. Most, like if you read... Um, uh, romance novels are, tend to be about 50,000 words. If you tend to read like women's fiction, like The Vanishing Half that we read for the Moxie Life Book Club, mm -hmm. it was probably 
I'm going to guess it was 110 or 120,000 that thickness. So um, I spent the next three or four months and I added another 30 or 40,000 words and took it through edits and sent it off to agents and got some interest, got people requesting the full. And then a couple people asked for me to do revisions and then resubmit. And so that's all very exciting. And then it ended up being no's. And so I don't have an agent, but I was kind of hooked. And so a year later, I wrote another one and did the whole thing again. And then, um, and so now I'm working on my third manuscript. So we'll see, maybe third time's the charm. Maybe this one will be the story that hits it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, now I, have, now I have one more thought. Nothing but like, you know, big chunks of paper in a drawer. Maybe my kids will read them someday, but, but it's fun. So my question for you, if you don't mind me asking, is you, you're working on your third manuscript. Uh, manuscript. What made you just keep going after you got like the no and the rejection? What made you keep going? So it's the running thing. Like this all happened at this, like the running and real and like 2015, like I started planning and I was like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to miss out on the fun and community because I'm worried about the mess. And I started running and I stink at it, but it's fun. So I'm going to keep going, even though I'm not the greatest. And I think the same thing clicked into place with re with writing. I was like, okay, this one didn't get picked up by an agent, but I really enjoy doing it. And there's a really cool writing community on Twitter. There's a lot of, you know, there's conferences to go to and there's a really fun and encouraging community of writers. I don't want to quit just because it's hard or because I'm not the best at it. I want to keep enjoying and experiencing the part I'm experiencing. And so now I will say it's not without emotion. Like, pouring yourself into 80 or 90,000 words and sending it out into the world and then hearing no thank you 60 times. It took a little toll and I like for a little while, I just let it sit and I just didn't do anything about it. But after a few months, you know, I it's sort of a weird thing to wake up and have characters like talking to you in your head. But I was like, hmm, that would be an interesting story. Let me write that one down. <laughs> so, So then I was back at it. Oh my goodness. I love that. And if y'all don't mind, I'm just for my own personal thing. I want to know how do you guys handle rejection? Like how do you keep going after mm -hmm. you've been told no before? Um, so, like help a sister out because I'm constantly trying to figure out, you know, how do I keep going when someone's maybe said, when, when you get back a no or you're mm -hmm. not right or you don't fit, you don't have the look or you not necessarily going what we looking for, whatever. Mm. I would love to know how y'all handle rejection, whatever that That's looks like. a hard thing because I feel like your your segment of the arts, it's probably hard to separate that out and not, it's hard for it to not feel personal. Like at least with a book, it was a little bit easier for me to separate that and go, okay, they're not telling me no. That story's not right for their list or for what their house is publishing or, you know, <laughs> it's got to be a little bit harder as a performer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it it depends. It's like one of the most superficial industries ever, especially like more so on the film side of things mm -hmm. when it's just, it's literally nothing, you know, related to you, but it's more so just like we have yes. the picture and you're just, you don't look like that person that we're going for or you're not 5'2", you're too short or, you know, it's it's literally the smallest thing. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, And so it just, yeah, it just depends. Um, there's, these comments are lighting up real quick. Someone told you, you should write about the quints. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, Heather Norton found it. The tip that I was talking about when I was like, how did she know? Look, it was about craving connection or feeling disconnected. And I, I remember reading, I think that is the one I remember reading that and going, she did not know there was going to be a pandemic, but yeah, we're all feeling it. Sierra was yeah. on it. There was some divine inspiration happening when she That was some divine inspiration right there. Okay, so mm -hmm. what's up, Sierra, by the way? Hey, yeah. uh, in the comments, we were talking about how you have um, did your wellness tip at the, like, for the week and notes and reflections for each week and how you had strategically placed those out. And we were talking specifically about this one right here on May 4th, where you were talking about craving connection are feeling disconnected from loved ones and friends. And we're like, that's so spot on. So, mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Heather, for looking that up. You come on, Heather, come through. Yes. Um, I want to listen to all these rejections. Y'all have some great tips. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Heather said, I reframe it and say, okay, I'm going to go shopping oh, for rejections. That's, for rejections. That's a popular thing in the writing community. Like people are like, I need to collect at least a hundred no's before I can stop working on this project. And so they'll, they'll look at it that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a good approach. That is a good approach. And I hear that all like you get a hundred no's before you get one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Katie says, I do my best to take it as a lesson and continue to grow and go for something better. I'm all about God's timing and fully believe in that. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's what it is for me. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what's the plan? Yep. I apply for a lot of grants. I cry, get mad, eat, and move on. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, yes, yes. Sierra says, I tell myself those aren't my people. And need to keep looking for who is. Mm. That's good. Yeah. In in writing, people talk about how it's better to have no agent than to have the wrong agent. And that's a that's that was sort that's a lot like that. That's a that's a helpful way for me to think about it. Like I'd rather not jump into the wrong working relationship than like Katie said, wait for God's timing, hold out for the right, the right scenario. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Lauren said, I recently just let myself sit in the sadness until it made me mad and re-inspired to keep going. Go dig in <laughs> and find the, the fire. You got to find the fire. Yeah. I love that. I, I think I love that because it's like you're you're not rejecting the emotion. You're not, which I have a tendency. I'm like, I'm not going to, nope, I'm not going to give in to the sadness. And then, nope, mm -hmm. let me just sit in that and then let it like inspire me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I okay. love that so much. And Heather said, and so if I get rejected, I go, woo, there's another one. <laughs> Heather, I love this so much. I use that to turn the rejection of dating, which was em miss me for to actually look forward to it. Oh, I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Woo, there's another one. That's right. Got another that. wrong one out of the way, moving closer to the right one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. I love that. You guys are so smart. Like these comments are just full of. Yes. Oh, I love that so much. I'm totally using. Woo, there's another one. That spoke to my heart today. <laughs> <laughs> it just spoke dance to my when you say it. Like you can create a dance move that goes with it. Woo, there's another one. Yes. <laughs> I can do that. I can. <laughs> yes, I love that so much. Okay. You officially got me turned. Okay. So I w I have so many questions more about your planner. Okay. I want to know what are your favorite planning accessories mm. slash necessities, accessories and necessities. Look at me rhyming tonight. Okay. This is what I live with like all the time. This is one of those little pen cases that pulls down. Have you seen these? Yeah. I love it so much because it's just, there's everything. So I've got, of course, my mild liners that are coordinated to my Moxie Life. Of course, I've got a couple of black ink gel 0.5. I got a couple different versions, but that's black ink. Always. Black ink, always. <laughs> All the black ink. Um, I've got a little ruler. I've got white out, always. And then, okay, this is when I'm, when I, you know how I told you, I've done lots of stickers and then I've done just pen and highlighter, are very functional. So when I'm in the sticker mood, then this comes out. Let me see if I can lift it up. Okay. This is so much fun. This is, um, I'm not hawking it. I don't sell it, but this is by 31 products. It's a creative, I think it's called a creative caddy. I wrote it down before we got started because I thought this might come up. Creative Caddy. This version is in um, charcoal. Okay, so check this out. It's got snaps on the front. And this flips open and has Velcro, two pockets. And on the back, it's got more snaps. And then it's got divided pockets, three pockets. Oh, my goodness. And this one has a zipper. And then in here are all my little binders and a pen pouch. And okay, I'm not sure what this thing was supposed to be for, but it perfectly fits washi. 
Okay, wait, I have never seen anyone use one of those before. That's like a pencil case and you made it fit your washi? It's, it, I bought it, it's this same line by 31. I think that they market these as like for scrapbooking supplies. I don't remember what this one's called, but it exactly fits washi. And it came as a set of two. And so I keep the skinny colors that I use most frequently in here. It's a necessity. I just use the rings, but the fact that I, I like the idea that you have like a container for like when you're traveling. Yeah. Like, oh my, okay. So and, wait. and this has the handles so I can tear, if I'm in here, I can keep it in here. But if I need to go sit on the couch and get cozy, I can just take it with me. And it keeps it all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first off, I want to know these binders. They look like some Chrissy Ann design binders. There right? are, there are, but they are not the new big ones, which I'm very excited. I saw you got to like sneak peek, didn't you? Oh my gosh. Okay. Great, it's so much bigger. Oh my word. I would need another tote though, because I'm all out of space in my <laughs> And then there would go my like spending plan. Okay. This was my first binder for KAD stuff. And so I just used one of her decals and this was like a binder from Target, I think. Uh-huh. And this was, uh, oh my gosh, some of these sheets are so old, girl. And I, I want to see, I want to see the old, I want to see the old ones. Like uh, I had all, hold on. I can never remember exactly where the camera is going to go. So I, all my little bits and pieces I keep seeing people going through and taking their little bits and pieces and putting them all together on one sheet. That might be the next project I need to undertake and like organizing them by color. You would, you would excel at that. I would. I, I would going to give you my stickers and let you do it for me. Cause I'm my like, it is color. It goes in rainbow order. Like I have my shirts, so I have all my sleeveless shirts and they're in rainbow order and then all my short sleeve shirts and they're in rainbow order and then all the long sleeve and then they're in rainbow order and then my dresses and then they're in. Okay. I thought I was, okay. I have a problem. <laughs> it's okay though. <laughs> so, comment. Let, I want to know how y'all organize your closets real quick because this is how I have mine set up. It's in order like rainbow color, but how I have it set up is like, I don't have it. I don't have multiple rainbows, I if that you. makes sense. Like, I'm just like, uh -uh. it's mm -hmm. just all white, but are all, all the, gray. When you have all the white tops, for example, do you hang them in order of sleeve or do you just, they're just willy nilly, but all the white ones are in a section? I, my system kind of tends to be like the short sleeve into longer sleeve kind mm -hmm. of a, like that's yeah. kind of how I would do it. Like the that's short. True. That's very logical to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I kind like that's kind of how I would do it. I used to be super crazy in college, and I would have a certain hanger color for different styles of clothes. Ooh, like, I bet that made your closet very pretty, though. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was overwhelming. It, oh, it was too much. Too much. Now I'm just like, but I started doing um like a capsule closet kind of a oh, thing yeah. where um it's like this. What a you know, capsule closet. But then they all coordinate. Yeah. Yeah. Everything coordinates. So I think the only colors usually in my closet are white, gray, black, beige. And then my accent colors are like burgundy, olive, and like a mauve. And I would, so, I would have guessed turquoise and yellow because of your brand colors. I would have thought. Oh, I could like those colors. That's very <laughs> They're probably going to change because I like to change everything. Turquoise. So you can match your, that's too much. <laughs> oh my God. Sleeve order is a must. Sleeve yeah. order. Okay. This one is Lily Henry, whose shop has been on hiatus for a really long time. And she doesn't. So I kind of, like, I, I, I want to use them, but I don't want to use them up because she's not printing anymore. <laughs> but so this one is, this one is mostly all. Lily Henry. And then I have a few stickers that are a different brand, but they're similar colors and like the style is similar. So I put them all in this binder, but that's what this one is. Okay. Yes. I do love my bright yellow sweatshirt. I'm adding like yellow to the accent colors too. I knew there had to be a, like, there's a reason those colors spoke to you when you created your whole planning together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one is the Celebrations. I don't know if this one is the first Celebrations or the second Celebrations collection. Did I see, did you buy the newest one? This is Christine mm -hmm. Designs. 
No, I have not bought the newest celebration clip. That is like my end of the year gift to myself. Ooh, like, fun. I just got to figure out what the goal is going to be. Mm. See, this is the kind of part I'm thinking like, what's my reward going to be? And I don't <laughs> even thought the goal. Honestly, it's 2020. If you survive the year, you should get a reward. <laughs> this is just <laughs> 2020. You've made it. Yay. Everybody gets a gift. We need Oprah to show up and just hand out presents for surviving. You survived 2020. <laughs> yes. That should totally be a thing. Oh okay. God. So listen, y'all heard it here. Michelle said, I don't need a goal to. <laughs> I'm for a goal, but I'm also for rewarding yourself just for, for existing. Like okay. we need to give ourselves more credit for that. We do, we do, we do. Y'all, at this time, if you have any questions you want to ask Michelle about anything, go ahead and put it in the comments right now. See, look, um, a lot of people are like, remembered, a lot of folks remember Lily Henry. I know. Yes. She had love, yes. Her school stickers, they were the best. They were my yes. favorite. Oh, okay. So what plan? Come on. Literally, you going to call me out like that? How you going to call me out like this? Come on. Like, I know that should probably be my goal, but we, that's going to be hard. But- you know, to be fair, sometimes you ask your audience to help you stay accountable. So they're just trying to do, they're just trying to do what you ask them to do. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all are the best. Oh, that's funny. Uh, you survived 2020. Sticker binders for right? everyone. <laughs> yes. I'm uh, on my board. Favorite yeah. meme, my favorite meme so far has been the one where it was like, I'm not buying another planner until I see a trailer <laughs> for <laughs> Have y'all seen that meme? Like, I love it so much because I'm like, that's so true. Yes, I saw it, but I was like, mm, but that doesn't really work for me because I'll buy a planner even if it's another dumpster fire just because I need to plan out all of the all of the things. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I mean, I think the biggest way that I've like been using my planner for this unexpected year was like just changing it to fit my needs. Like I was like, well, yeah. I ain't got places to be. I at least can highlight what I'm grateful for are focused on the things that are happening and mm -hmm. more so going back to like the journaling and the self reflecting yeah. side of things. Yes. But yeah. Oh, you have, Oh, I love this question. Is it Kira? Did yeah. I say that right? Have you thought of self publishing your book? Um, I have considered it. I think that I want to, I want to at least make an attempt to connect with agents and go the traditional route first only because self publishing involves a lot of marketing and marketing makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. I um, I probably don't sound like it right now because I've been talking for like 50 minutes straight, but I'm actually a very introverted person. And so it like putting myself out there for a marketing mm -hmm. type of thing would take a lot out of me. And I realize even traditional publishing um, nowadays, writers still do a lot of marketing. It's not like it used to be where there was like a whole team behind everybody. They really only do that for the biggest, brightest names. But there's still a little bit of a difference if you've got an agent and an editor and sort of a team, you know, collaborating. Like we're all kind of, they've all kind of got a little skin in the game and everybody wants it to succeed. Um, my husband keeps saying, just, let's just print a couple for us to have. And I'm like, well, no, that defeats the whole part. Like if I'm going to do all the work, I want to see it on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but if I get it like, okay. If I get to like my 70th birthday and I still haven't had anything picked up and published, I will probably get it like bound somewhere so that I can give it to my grandkids, you know, just for the legacy thing of like, and then your crazy grandma tried to write a book and she was nuts and nobody wanted it. But here you go. <laughs> That's, my vision. That's my dream for my future grandchildren. <laughs> oh, it is. I love that. OK, real quick. I want to ask you about legacy. How do you how do you necessarily plan or like think about legacy in terms of like, I know we have had conversations about this, like mm -hmm. there's certain things that I keep that are my mom's, like I have her like high school yearbook and I'm like, I'm going to keep it because it's special yeah. to me. Yeah. Like what are things that like, I love that you're like, I'm going to keep that, you know, book and publish it and then pass it down to legacy. How do you go about planning legacy? If that makes sense. I love that question. Um, First of all, I think there's sort of two aspects to consider when we think about legacy. The first is the intangibles. And so we have a lot of family traditions. 
Um, our faith is a really important part of legacy in our family. And so I think there's a lot that I'm passing down to my kids that isn't touchable. I'm a huge believer in the power of story. I love to tell my kids stories from when I was a kid, from when their dad was a kid, grandparents and uncles. I think it builds in them a sense of like, this is who I am and this is who I come from. We can do hard things. We're truth tellers. We stand up for people who need our help. Um, and so building those kind of things intangibly is really important to me. And in terms of material things, pictures are really important to me. I was a big paper scrapbooker when that was really popular. And now I do a lot of digital scrapbooking. Um, art, we have a lot of art on the walls in our house. And my kids have already like, when you die, I get the Beethoven and I want the one with the, with the church in it. Like they're already <laughs> dividing it up. My eight-year-old has already started laying claim to jewelry. I made the mistake of taking her with me to the jeweler when I picked up my ring from being resized. And she was like, you know, when you die, I want your, I was like, oh, honey, I'm, I'm only 39. Can we not talk about my death quite so freely? <laughs> like you're a third grader. Um, so I, I think like, that's all good and fun and jokey, those kinds of things. But um, I have a lot of like, little tchotchke, little knickknack things that belong to my grandparents. And I, those are so special to me, even though they're not really of any material worth, like they're not expensive, they're not fancy. But when I see them or smell them, like I'm just, I'm instantly back there in their homes. And so it's my hope that my kids will develop that kind of attachment to something. It might not be material. It might just be a photo. Maybe it'll be that art for my eight-year-old. It might be that necklace that she's got her eye on. But um, my hope is that it's more than just that, that object and that it's the symbol of all these great memories and all these things that we've built, you know? That's so good. I agree. I think Sierra said, I love your heart, Michelle. I agree. I love your heart so much. I think that's awesome. I, I love that so much. Um, there's one more question that I that I really, I think this is really good. I'm a stay at home mom too. And I struggled for years not feeling important as those who worked. What do you think is the biggest thing you learned about yourself through transitioning? That I love that. I think that's a really common, it's a common struggle. And I think a lot of us are not prepared for it. Like we spend, we spend so many years preparing for, like whatever gig we do that comes before the stay at home mom years. Um, and then a lot of us are just not prepared for what it's going to feel like. A lot of us don't have peers that are doing it at the same time. And then that like, there's that isolation stuff that goes on. And um, I feel like our culture kind of swings back and forth. Like you get those mommy wars moments, you know, where it's like people get really rabid about, how hardworking moms have it. And they do, they do have it hard. And then people get really rabid about how hard it, it just, it becomes a whole thing. But I think individually, um, one of the things that was helpful for me is that my husband's job is such that in residency years, he was working 80 or hundred hours a week. And it became really clear really early that if I didn't just kind of, like, I just have to kind of handle things around the mm -hmm. house around, then he would jump in and that'd be great. Um, but that dynamic, I think, helped me feel kind of early on. I think it clicked into place kind of early for me that what I was doing really mattered because if I wasn't doing it, <laughs> literally nothing was going to get done. And I think that's probably very different for people in other dynamics with different careers. Um, but I think whenever you've got a spouse who does some kind of service job, the other thing that comes up is that sometimes I would feel bad when I resented the amount of work he did because his work is so noble. Like, how can you not want mm -hmm. someone to go heal people? You know, I think it's probably a similar thing if you've got a spouse in law enforcement or a spouse who's a teacher or a social worker, like those jobs can be so demanding and they can take so much out of your spouse. And then they come home and they're exhausted or they are on call for long stretches of time. I mean, you think about firefighters who do those like days on days off kind of shifts and yeah, or ER doctors who do that kind of thing. If you're the spouse who's at home, that's a hard thing to work through. Like how do you get to where you're like not resentful of the time they're away and not resentful of the time they need to recover and recharge when they get home and also still maintain all the stuff you have to do and not resent the fact that it's sort of a thankless job. 
Um, and I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I think that really comes back to gratitude. It really, it really comes back to the idea of like making a list in a line journal and doing your dreaming, but also just sort of being in the moment and being aware of, of the gifts you have in that moment, the things that are good in that moment, the things, um, if your spouse is in one of those kind of demanding jobs, the reason they picked that job is probably one of the reasons that you love them. Like they've got a heart that serves, whether it's law enforcement or medicine or teaching or whatever it is, like they're giving to other people. You do love that about them. Even if at the moment you're a little mad about it, you know, you just kind of, you, I literally, there were times that I can remember like, toddler screaming and baby crying and I'm unloading the dishwasher and I'm the only one home for the 48th hour in a row. And I can remember like putting dishes away going, I love my husband. I like slamming dishes. In the <laughs> I'm going to speak this out loud to myself until I remember it again. <laughs> I love that. Sometimes I think we just have to be really firm, like as firm with ourselves as we are with our kids when we're trying to remind them of something that's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And you just, you like did a full circle. You brought it right back. To there. <laughs> That's the writer in you. Like, I, 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 love you good back. I really do. <laughs> you brought that full, like full circle back. Like you, you're like, we're going to close it how we ended it. It went right back to gratitude. And I love that. And you literally just said like, like the way that we treat our children and reminding them like, of like, we're not going to tell our children, like, you know, we're not going to let them believe lies about themselves. We're not going to tell our right. children, you're not good enough. You can't know. So why would we treat ourselves the same way? So right. I love, come on, listen. Oh my gosh. You're <laughs> wonderful. Oh, thank you, girl. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to know where can people keep up with you? I'm on Instagram at michelle.nebel okay. and blog at www.michellenebel.com. Okay. We're dot in the middle there. All right. Yes. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Y'all, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Y'all always so fun. Fun. I gotta go back later and like read all of the uh all of the comments because I couldn't read all of them. They were going fast. Yes, they are great comments. And someone had told you to check out like an author that you should check mm -hmm. out. Um thank you. definitely look them up. But y'all, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Y'all constantly amaze me each and every week by showing up. I love y'all and I can't wait to see y'all next week. Bye.